Turn with me to Matthew chapter 9. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 9. <clears throat> there were two blind men, verse 27, <clears throat> who came crying out to him, Have mercy on us, son of David. And if you read the parallel passage in Mark, it says, they, he asked them, what do you want me to do for you? He said, open our eyes. And what did Jesus say? He did not say, thou shalt open thine eyes. He said, I will do it for you. I will open your eyes for you. He did not tell them to go and do eye exercises for the next one year and come back. He said, I will do it for you. He wasn't teaching psychology. He was teaching faith. But he asked them one more question before doing it for them. And that's the question I want to say to you. Matthew 9 verse 28. Do you believe that I can do this for you? Before I do it for you, and you apply it to yourself now, what is it, the sin that you want to be delivered from? The Lord is not saying, thou shalt stop doing that. No, 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 no. Don't go back to the old covenant. I will. Remember Exodus 20 and Hebrews 8? Not, thou shalt not do that thing again. I will do it for you. I will write my, that law of mine in your heart and mind. I will give you the desire and the ability to do it. But before I do it, I have a question to ask you. Do you believe that I will do this for you? You say, well, Lord, I've been such a slave, I'm not so sure. Okay, then it won't happen. But these people said, yes, Lord. I know I've been born blind, but you can do it now. I've been born self-centered, but you can deliver me from it. What is the answer? According to your faith, verse 29, be it done to you. <clears throat> and I'm supposing, I've thought that if one of those blind men had said, Lord, I'm not too sure whether you can open both eyes, but certainly one eye. What would Jesus have said to him? According to your faith, be it done to you. And he'd have gone out with one eye open. And he'd have seen the other guy with both eyes open. He'd say, how in the world did you get both eyes open? No, no, no. Jesus opens only one eye. His doctrine would be Jesus will open one eye. Why? Because he experienced only that. And the other guy who says Jesus will open both eyes, he calls him a heretic. How in the world can you say Jesus opens both eyes? He, he opened only one eye of mine. This is the controversy going on in Christendom. Some people say Jesus forgives sins. Another person says Jesus not only forgives sins, but he delivers us from sin's power. No, he doesn't. He opens only one eye. He forgives sin. Why? Because they believed only for that much. They believed Jesus only forgives sin. According to your faith, be it unto you. Another person believed Romans 6.14. Sin will not rule over you because you're under grace. Do you believe I can do this for you? And he says, yes. He gets both eyes open. And this one fellow calls the other person a heretic. This is what's happening in Christendom. Do you believe you can be delivered from the love of money to which you've been enslaved all your life? Up to you, brother. According to your faith, be it unto you. Not just desire. Desire so many people have. A lot of people have a desire, but according to your faith. Not do you have a desire for this. No, he said, do you believe? This is the difference. I think many Christians have a desire, but they don't believe the Lord can do it in them. They have tried and tried and tried and tried and said, it doesn't work. And if it can't work for me, it can't work for you. And if anybody testifies that it has worked for me, he's a liar. If anybody says God opened both his eyes, he's telling a lie. He opens only one eye. Why do you make your low standard of faith the example for everyone else? You know, the Bible speaks about Abraham in Romans 4 as the example of faith. He's an Old Testament person, but he's shown as an example. He lived before the Old Covenant. And, but he's presented in Romans chapter 4 as an example for faith. He's called the father of faith for us Christians. 
turn to the old testament and see something about abraham's life god told him in genesis Genesis chapter 17 I will establish my covenant with you and even earlier you know the lord had told him that I will bless you in Genesis 12 and verse 2 and make you a blessing and in your seed uh, all the families of the earth will be blessed and that seed was to be through Sarah now he already had a son in Genesis 16 verse 16 called Ishmael he was 86 years old and when he said can Ishmael uh, be the seed god said no he's not the one i will not accept him verse Genesis 17 18 oh that Ishmael might live before you and god said no not him in when i talked about a son i was not talking about just you i was talking about a son through Abraham and Sarah Genesis 17 verse 19 through him i'll fulfill my promise and before isaac was born remember is abraham is now 99 years old verse 17 chapter 17 sorry verse 1 chapter 17 1 and god told him something verse 5 i want you to do something abram i want you to change your name from today you're going to call yourself abraham abram meant exalted father genesis 17 verse 5 abraham means a father of a multitude so think in those days like today if you had to go to some registrar office and get your name changed and he goes to the registrar's office and says i want to change my name and what do you want to change your name to father of a multitude how many children do you and your wife have no none at the moment but you got no children and you're calling yourself father of multitude yes father of multitude why because god said so from today my name is father of multitude abraham had 318 servants by the way he was a very rich man he calls all his servants next morning and says fellas from today onwards you are going to call me what father of a multitude and those fellas might have been laughing in secret what's happened to this guy and he kept calling himself father of a multitude father of a multitude father of a multitude today nobody laughs at him nobody laughs at him today even in his lifetime he had many children but he kept confessing it when there was no sign of it sarah didn't become pregnant he waited waited he confessed it confessed it confessed it confessed it and one year later he saw the beginning of it the first son born he still didn't see a multitude but he called himself father of a multitude when he had no children that's the example that came to me i read in romans 6:14 that sin will not rule over me because i'm under grace now i'm under the new covenant but sin was ruling over me i was like abraham childless And the Lord said change your name. What's my present name? Defeated by sin. What's my new name going to be? Conqueror over sin. But Lord, I'm not conquering sin. No, confess it. It's like Abraham saying, "Lord, I don't have any children." No, confess it that you're a father of a multitude. Because I said so. I said, "Okay, Lord." Romans 6:14 says I'll be a conqueror over sin. I'm going to confess it even though right now I'm defeated by anger, I'm defeated by lust, I'm defeated by so many things. I'm going to confess Romans 6:14. I am going to be a conqueror over sin. I'm going to be one who can experience the promises and the commandments in the New Testament. I'm going to come to a place where I will rejoice always. Where I will be anxious for nothing. where i will give thanks for everything 1 thessalonians 5:18 where i will give thanks in everything ephesians 5:20 and i said lord this is amazing i'm going to keep confessing it and i'd be defeated the next day and the devil says ha ha what happened yeah i i agree i slipped up 
but I'm going to be a conqueror over sin. It's like the devil coming to Abraham and saying, where's your son? Where's the multitude? He'd say, no, not yet, but I'm going to be one day a conqueror. That is faith. Do you believe I can do this for you? You say, yes, Lord. I don't care of the experiences of other blind men who got only one eye opened. I believe you can open both eyes. I believe if you've commanded me to do something, I can experience it. I want to live a totally God-centered life. And I believe you can do it for me. I can't do it. You can so fill me with the Holy Spirit that you can change my whole mind and my way of thinking and my goals and ambitions that I can experience what scripture says I should experience. <laughs>